to be honest, I have no idea what that is. It's pretty much keeping up with the health of the public. I'm just guessing it means... I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it means. Uh, the safety and health of the entire public. I'm getting taken care of. Maybe something to do with healthcare. Um, I don't know. The health of everybody in a community. Well being of Ensuring health standards for the entire community that keep us all safe from widespread diseases and pandemics. Making sure that everyone is healthy and lives a good lifestyle. The definition of public health is the fulfillment of society's interest in health and the assurance that a healthy environment is provided for the society through the prevention of disease and the promotion of health. This can be seen all around us from seatbelt laws to clean air acts to patient protection studies. This is implemented at three different levels, including the individual, public, and private community organizations and governmental lawmakers. In order to make sure that the health of the public is reached, assessment of the problem is used. Policies are implemented in order to provide a healthier environment for citizens. Finally, assurance is used to make sure that everyone has access to the new healthy change and that the change is making the society better. didn't get it even once a week. We didn't really eat fast food a lot. We would only get it like if we were rushing, trying to get some there. I'd go solid once a week. Probably like once a month tops. Probably three times a week. While nutrition is not the only component influencing obesity, it is one of the main contributing factors. Once you gain fat cells, you can't lose them. They only shrink, so most overweight and obese children become overweight or obese adults. Currently, 20% of children ages 6 to 11 and 18% of children ages 12 to 19 are obese. High availability of sugary foods correlates with areas of the country where the childhood obesity epidemic is worse. In the South, where childhood obesity is most prevalent, the sale of sugary, fatty, and healthy foods is highest. There are many health concerns often associated with obesity, including psychological and self-esteem issues, heart disease, diabetes, and stroke, as well as certain types of cancer. There have been many laws that have passed through Congress that try to provide healthier options to adolescents throughout school. Many states have passed laws that prohibit the sale of sugary sodas and other drinks in vending machines throughout the school systems. Although this targets the nutrition, studies done for assurance have shown that this has not affected the obesity rates in children at all. Another law that has been signed into action is the Nutrition Labeling and Education Act that was signed in 1990. This law required the FDA to put accurate nutrition labeling on all food that it produces so that the public would know how healthy it is. Although the law has been widely accepted and the public has the knowledge of obesity, their attitude must be changed so that they know they are at risk so the obesity rates will not rise. There is a law that was signed in December of 2010 by President Obama titled the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. This law requires healthy options at breakfast and lunch to be provided by public school systems, as well as less expensive options at discount prices for kids who cannot afford it. This law is supposed to go into effect during the 2012-2013 school year, so the government is currently working on implementing this law. The results have not been shown yet, but the rates will soon show the effect the law has on the obesity percentages in children. In order to drop obesity rates in the future, it is a good idea for parents to become more involved. Since most of the time children spend is in the home, parents need to lead by example. They should eat healthier and stock the home with healthy yet tasty alternatives for the family. Education materials should also be updated. Institutionalized material about nutrition and healthier lifestyles should be updated and current as to be able to connect to future generations of children. Community and involved individuals should also connect with their local lawmakers. They can write letters, set up appointments, and vote for politicians who support healthier lifestyles and nutritional changes in your community. You can make a difference. Lead by example.